Hey everybody, Terry here, D-Lab. I got an update for you. You know that K1 module that I made for the Rangers to allow push to talk function? Well, I upped the game on it. It's got some new features and I'm excited to show you the new K2 module. This, this old man, he's D-Lab. He repairs radios for the hand of the knick-knack. Patty hack, give him lots of wine. Deny that he'll be just fine. <laughs> Hey, d -Lab. and I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Well, oh, I see you have a glass of wine. It looks really nice. Anyways, what are you doing with those circus boards, what? tube guy? <laughs> okay, so before you interrupt me again, even okay. though you're not interrupting, Emmy never interrupts me. Oh, sure. These no, <laughs> are my little push-to-talk modules that I put in old radios. So what oh, that sounds boring. Yeah, 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 so what I'm trying to do is show people my new product without being interrupted Ah, so yeah. I didn't interrupt anything. No, Good. not at all. Good. Yeah. yeah, hit the road. Good. Bye. All right, so let's get Push to Talk installed in this Ranger. Now, for this installation, we are not going to use the standard K1 D Lab Push to Talk board. We're going to use my newest K2 board. This board provides auxiliary switching that a lot of you guys have been asking for. The K1 was actually designed per the Johnson Ranger manual, okay? It's just an extension of what they did with an easy plug-in module. This module will allow the same switching plus allow you to turn on and off your front indicator light and switch the screen circuit to the 6146. So let's put in the K2. I'm initially going to wire it the stock way, which is this side of the relay. Then we'll hook up the accessory side. So I've already done the preliminary wiring. I have the new switching lead that goes to the rear two pin jack. So that solder with the .05 microfarad cap to ground that swings around and comes up to pin four of the old 6AX4 rectifier tube socket. All right, let's get the module in. I already raised the platform. 6AX5 rectifier tube is removed because just like the K1 module that goes into that position with the rectifier diodes, the K2 will go in the same spot. Okay, then we need to take this wiring and hook it up to the operate switch. So here is the K2 board installed in the Ranger operating in the K1 mode, meaning I'm not using the auxiliary relay contacts, okay? So this is wired identical to my standard K1, which is per the Johnson diagram that they show for push to talk, okay? So here we go. Now, as you can see, we're sitting here in plate and I have some idle current. There's no output. Now, I'm going to go to phone. You see that light comes on. This is one of the complaints that many of you have had that, hey, I would like a transmit indicator light. Well, in the K1 and the stock Johnson configuration, you can't have it. They didn't have the contacts for it, okay? So here we are. We're talking. Ranger's working great. That standard push to talk, okay? You go to standby, you see that idle current is still there, okay? That is another thing that we can eliminate with the auxiliary contacts on the K2 board. But this Ranger is working as Johnson specified for their stock push to talk system. And that's what we got. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the auxiliary contact for the transmit light. So currently this Ranger does not have a lamp over here. Many of them didn't. Okay. We're going to move a power on indicator over here, and this will be our transmit indicator. So then, when I key, you're going to see this action on the lamp. So let's get it hooked up. Now here's the back side of the Ranger. K2 board is installed. You see, I only have wiring on one side. That's the stock K1 style wiring, okay? Now we have two sets of unused contacts here, form C, so we have a common 
have a normally closed, normally open. There's two sets. So one set we're going to dedicate for turning on and off a transmit indicator light. Currently you see there's a little GE47 bulb down there that illuminates the front panel light. But on this side they didn't have anything. So I'm going to add another indicator lamp and this came off of another Ranger. So the little pilot hole is perfect for that jewel. The only word of caution is, is when you install this do not put it in vertically because if that terminal touches this platform your filament wiring is going to go up in a ball of smoke and you can't move fast enough to stop it. So you always want to mount them in here horizontally. Alright let's get that in. We'll wire up the filament circuit and see those lights work. Alright the Ranger now has two indicator lamps. This one here is simply power on okay and that's just wired direct to the little filament terminal board here and over here that one that used to be there to begin with now becomes the transmit indicator lamp. So you see that green line it comes over here goes to the K1 normally open contact on the accessory side and swings over to the terminal on the function switch that used to turn on that lamp over there. So now when you key your transmitter you should have a transmit indicator lamp. Let's see how that works. So for the ease of testing I'm going to leave the keyer platform kind of hanging in the breeze. I got a jumper on it to provide a ground. We've got the Ranger fired up and now you can see we have a power indicator lamp here where it used to be over here where you are in phone. Now when I'm toggling between phone and standby there's no activity on that lamp. All right, let's key it up. There it is. Now you have a push to talk indicator and that is coming from the accessory contacts on the K2 module. Okay, so we have one set of auxiliary contacts still available on the K1. So there's a couple things you can do with that. If you take a look, you'll see that you always have modulator current, right? So when you're in foam position, you're drawing modulator current, which generates heat, okay? So what you could do in this case with that auxiliary set of contacts that's still available on the K1 is turn on and off the screen voltage going to the modulators, and that would reduce heat and wear to those tubes, all right? So why don't we go ahead and do that? There's another thing you could do is you could actually use the auxiliary set of contacts to also kill the screen to the 6146 output tube. I don't really think that's necessary myself. I think the modulators are pulling much more current, generating much more heat. So let's go ahead and break the screen circuit, go into the modulators, and see how that works. All right, guys, well, guess what? We're back at that rotary function switch okay if you take a look at the rear section you can reference your schematic for this look down here at pin 8 there's a yellow wire that is going to the screens of the modulator tubes okay so as originally configured when they're going from phone to standby they're actually breaking that screen voltage going to the modulators but when you install the push to talk system and the switch is always in phone, you are never removing the screen voltage. And that's why they're sitting there pulling full current even when you're not using them. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the yellow wire. We're going to run it through the auxiliary contacts that are left on the K2 board and back. And that will allow for the modulators to shut off between transmissions just like Johnson originally configured that switch. So let's get that wiring hooked up and test it out. All right, that yellow wiring that you see there is the screen circuit being switched to the modulators through my last auxiliary contacts on the K2. Go around here and see how we're doing. I'm in standby right now. So you see we have no modulator current. Okay, there's my plate, there's my modulator. Now remember initially, when I go to phone, 
you'd see the modulation current. Now you don't because that's being switched through my module. So when I transmit, there's modulated current. <laughs> see it's doing its thing, okay? Unkey, now the modulator screens are being killed at the same time. So the only thing I noticed is, is when you key up, watch my modulator current, it has to kind of build up as the tubes are coming on. So that means you're not going to be able just to slam it and start talking, right? You have to have that little bit of a delay before the modulators are up to proper current. But that should not be an issue at all. All right, so a successful install of the new K2 switching board for the Ranger. The pinout of the base is identical to the K1. So if you have a K1 and you want to switch up to this type of switching, it simply plugs in and you transfer your wiring to this board. So the K2 provides the 120 volt AC switching to the rear socket for your TR switch. It switches your negative keying bias. It switches the TR indicator lamp on the front of the Ranger and turns on and off the screen circuits to the modulator tubes. So it really is a nice addition for the Johnson Ranger. Okay, this thing really came together well. I will be publishing an updated schematic for the K2 system. I'll put that at the end of this video so you guys can review it. And yes, these kits are available right now. Okay, wiring is a little more complicated but it's very doable and in case you're wondering CW mode is not affected whatsoever okay the phone and CW operation are completely independent of each other so it's a great mod for your Ranger alright so the K2 modules are officially released I have the information on my website you can either buy the module with the octal socket for the Ranger or you can buy just the board without the socket and you can use this for transmitters requiring special switching. So that gives you four Form C contacts available for all types of switching in your transmitter applications and of course they will come with a hookup diagram. So check out DLab Electronics. We're ready to go with the project.